This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Community Matters. Think Tech Hawaii has created a series of Community Matters where we talk to candidates all over the state of Hawaii, from South Point to Nihihau and everything in between. And we've talked to candidates for governor, lieutenant governor, the Senate, the House, city council, county council, and OHA. And today, we are going to talk to Renee Ng, who is a community activist for as long as I can remember, 40 years maybe, something, something like that. Yeah. And because we were, you know, against the war together. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so Renee Ng is a candidate for the Green Party Lieutenant Governor. Aloha, uh, Renee. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so, not used to being the guest. <laughs> <laughs> but she is an activist and never met a cause she didn't like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just constantly out there. No matter what it is. She's there. No. So, so tell us about Renee. Tell us about you. Well, um, I was born and raised in Hawaii, as you know, and um, I, I don't know how I came to this activism thing. Um, I mean, my brother and sister grew up in the same circumstances. They're not, they're not activists, but, but it just, it always, I guess it was the time we grew up in, where we were against the war. We could see all of these injustices, and um, they were talking about climate change. They were talking about um, the Monsanto, this sort of agricultural technology. They were talking about a whole range of stuff, and the college was just so interesting. And when you found out about those sort of things, it was a little hard not to be concerned. <laughs> <laughs> It was, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> and so you, so you have just been an activist, like I said, for as long as I can remember. And so now you have, is this your first campaign? No, actually Jim and I ran when Lingo was in office. Mm -hmm. uh, so we ran in 2008, and as our program is basically just the same as it was then, a little more fleshed out because things have happened since, you know, in the decades since then and given us details of what we need to follow. What, what is the Green Party? Now, you know, of course, we all know about the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, but now on the ballot we have the Constitution Party and the Green Party and the Libertarians and mm -hmm. what. So what is the Green Party? What differentiate you from any other party? Well, I don't know if it distinguishes us from any other party, but our, I guess if you had to choose one word that describes us, it, what we're concerned about is sustainability. Sustainability of not only the environment, which is where the Green Party started in Germany as an environmental uh, party, um, but we need to be able to move on, and, and it's happening at the national level with the Green Party also, to become a party that includes not only sustainability for the environment, but also sustainability for the communities, sustainability for our democracy, you know, and um, so basically that's a big thing with us. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, we talk about sustainability. I, the people throw that word around. I, I, it's one of those things you hear, excuse me, all the time and you wonder, if people really understand what they mean mm -hmm. about sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, my, my first thought, of course, is um, we see so many people in distress, and I would think that food security, the thought that you know where your next meal is coming from, what is, how do you define Food security. Food security. What right. what is that? Food security is always having food to eat. 
and that is a real concern right now. You know, um, all of these climate change catastrophes that have been hitting uh, both floods and, and wildfires and that sort of thing, hurricanes, they've been devastating our food production capabilities. They've been de devastating farms, you know, piggeries and that sort of thing. And it, it's not only that, uh, that comes to mind recently because of the wildfires, but the thing is, with the droughts and with the U.S. mainland not being able to produce as much as it had before, that means we will not be getting food coming to Hawaii. They're going to feed themselves first. The sustainable, that means you can continue to sustain yourself. <laughs> Eat, in other words. And so we need to grow our own food here. I mean, if we could do it, they say for a million people pre-contact, we should be able to do it again. And, you know, that means we need land to grow our food on. And one of the things that, as a Green Party, we are saying, Ho'opili land, which is, you know, above, ever right. below, Makakilo, Kapolei, is the best land in the state for agriculture. I'm told best land in this country because it has four growing seasons. The only place, I mean, mainland doesn't have four growing seasons. It has beautiful soil. It has great irrigation and sunlight. It was called the Golden Triangle in the days of the plantation. And they're digging up that beautiful soil, meters deep, and throwing it out and building Ho'opili on it, which we don't need, apparently. But anyway. No, so what, what do you mean by building Ho'opili? What they're is They're building a housing development oh, housing. on it. They're, they're taking our best step, you know, agricultural land and paving it over. So we would like, through eminent domain, the green governor would ask that we buy that land back, Ho'opili land back, through eminent domain. We have a billion dollar surplus. If it costs 78 million to drop in the bucket for the future of our kids and our state. So, and um, but we, we have, need that kind we, of thing to grow we, on. We do. And we have farms on every island. Mm -hmm. well, of course, the ones on the big island have to be rethought. We right. have to replan, re yeah. redo that. Mm -hmm. However, we do have farms on every island. Are they being supported? Are the farms on these islands, because you take an island like Molokai where water is an issue but they still have farms and ranches. And um, even Kauai, where, where the rain has diminished here lately, after their There's flood, been, and now... Right. Yeah. So if we look at farms on every island, are they being sustained? They are not being supported the way our farming industry needs to be supported, the way they were. Uh, after, during the World War, actually, and all the way up until the 70s, we had a huge, they call it Victory Gardens. Yes, I remember uh, Victory Gardens. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yes. Mention it. You remember it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, and so they had this huge agriculture infrastructure that included, for instance, now the state gives ag 1% of its budget. At that time, the state gave grants to agriculture, I think, if my memory serves me, it about, was about 5%. We had a huge UH infrastructure that did research for the uh, farmers that um, would, of course, train farmers and then would also go out, extension services would go out and share best practices. And um, for instance, one of the things that 5% that grants can do uh, would be to say having a processing co-op for farmers where they all can come in, they don't have to have their individual ones, come into a processing place, you know, clean, cut, pack their produce for shipment, that sort of thing, so that that would be another support. But it, they should also be supported as far as the um, water infrastructure goes. I mean, it should not be a fight for them to do something individually. That needs to be something that is part of state policy to make food sustainability sustainable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. So and oh, I'm sorry. Governor Ige wanted to have to double the food production by 2030. We should 
2020 or 2030. Anyway, we should do that, and we should double it again by 2040. But can't we double it now? Yes, I mean, we should. We that's should. That's a long way down the road. I know. Oh, well, we should begin to build the infrastructure to double it. And one of the things, um, you know, Gubern Green Gubernatorial candidate Jim Brewer has been talking about is carts. And agriculture sustainability is the perfect place to have carts because who knows better than the farmers what the conditions out there and that particular part of the island with all of these micro environments, right? That particular part of the islands, um, the the sunlight, the the irrigation, whatever, um, is capable of growing what kind of crops? What they they would know more what they need to have in order to build a diversified ag system. And on, while you're at it at UH. Um, I understand that right now they're on a GMO track. They need to get off that track well, and go to diversified they, ag for the, the GMO food. <laughs> now, I don't know this for sure, mm -hmm. so don't quote me. Mm -hmm. But the GMO track means that Monsanto is giving them grant exactly. money to do the research. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's all that is. Yes. Is that uh -huh. This is money. Mm -hmm. And for anybody that doesn't know, when you plant the GMO seeds, because they are artificial, they don't reproduce. So the farmer has to come back next year and buy, buy more. more. Can't yes. save his seed and plant next year? No. Mm -hmm. See, a natural seed, natural, like people, like mm -hmm. bears, they reproduce. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. These seeds do not reproduce. So next year, after you harvest, you have got to come back to Monsanto and buy more. Mm -hmm. So and that's the, that is the real issue with the GMO, is that it keeps them it's, it's, in business. It's right, right, right. But uh, beyond that, they've been talking, because Monsanto is on trial right now, they've been talking about how the um, effects of the GMO on um, rat and poss probably, possibly human fertility and the, the uh, effect on our DNA is really, really dire. And so it, that, the effect on the bees, uh, the bees have a built-in guidance system that they go and they can come back. Mm. But this has the same effect on them mm -hmm. like Alzheimer's. They can't find their way mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. You know, so it has too many um, bad effects. So off GMOs, onto <laughs> healthy, local, Normal. Normal food <laughs> and um, ag ag car, ag citizen action round tables ag but, carts would be perfect okay. to help us my, build that infrastructure. My question, though, and and I I don't expect that you have a answer. All of these farmers that have this land that's in GMOs. Mm -hmm. If we said no more GMOs, what what happens to them? What happens that was happens to, to the farm, no to the what farmer, to not Monsanto. The farmer. The farmers. We have a problem because apparently once it's GMO, always GMO. So other than you know, just off the top of my head, don't quote me on this either. <laughs> um, uh, it seems to me it will be kind of like the lava land, devastated. Uh, once GMO, it's forever GMO. So. Uh, I don't know how you can sequester the GMO, but it would need to be, you know, the farmers are also a, the, their knowledge is also an infrastructure that we need for agriculture. So we would probably have to find other places where they can farm, um, sequester the GMO on their existing lots, you know, um, so that it doesn't, because apparently it also disperses to nearby lots, you know, without <laughs> anybody actually consciously planting it, which is scary. It is scary. That's scary. So we need to take a break. And when we come back, there's so much I want to talk to you about. <laughs> yeah, about the medical Medicaid for all. Mm -hmm. And, of course, where do we go from here to make sure that these people have this? So mm -hmm. we need to take a break, and mm -hmm. we'll be back in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. 
You can be the greatest, you can be the best You can be the king, come banging on your chest You can beat the world, you can beat the war You could talk to God, go banging on his door You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of New Japanese Language Show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us, where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Community Matters. And we have visited with candidates all over the state who are running for election or re-election from as far away as the Big Island and as far north as Nihihau and everything in between, all kind of places that most of us in urban Honolulu didn't know existed. So today we are talking to my friend Renee Ng, who is running as lieutenant governor for the Green Party. And most of us, again, don't have a clue about the Green Party. But the Green Party, as she has told us, kind of makes sense that their name would be Green, given their whole idea is about sustainable way of living. Now, the biggest issue in sustainability in Hawaii, which I have discovered talking to people from every island and every district is housing. Every district, every one of them has people living on the street, living in their cars, not enough housing. And we've heard people talk about building affordable housing, and we know that's not going to happen. It is. It huh? can. It, it can. can, but it, it can. isn't. When you talk about the developers, the cost and all the cost that goes into developing, then we have to rethink this thing. So one of the things you mentioned that I read in all of your details was creating Ohana zones. What do you mean by creating an Ohana, Ohana zone. zone? Yes, great. Um, and this is another place where we have to think outside of the box. It can happen. Uh, we, we're being told by the housing experts that no place on the mainland, so a tent city and those people became uh, uh, residents of low-cost affordable housing. But Ohana zones, the way the state, the 2018 legislature gave it funding, and the way the state is here, it can happen. For instance, if you take Pu'u Honua Owayanai out, you know, right. Wainer, which has about 200 people in it. If you, because we have so much state, we have so much government land, half of the state is government land. And so if you found a big piece of land in Wai'anae, if you took that 200 people, they built a tent city or rebuilt their tent city or whatever, built temporary housing on one half of that lot, and on the other half of the lot, you build quickly because it's the bill is only for three years the, the funds expire after three years so with, you need to build affordable portable low-cost housing on these other side then after you finish comp you, you need to build it quickly um uh you, then the people break down their tent or whatever dismantle their tent cities or leave it and go and become residents of a low-cost affordable housing. So do they thing. build it themselves? Do they of build course, it? No, them? no, no. It would have to be, the, the, the state would have to be. And I want to talk about affordable, portable, modular housing. So there's a prefab home kit for um, one bedroom, 576 square feet for under $12,000. Two bedroom, uh, 768 square feet for $16,000. Three bedroom, 1,000 uh, square feet for $21,000. 21, five, five bedroom, uh, 200 square feet for $40,000. Okay, we ne it needs to be 
affordable. It needs to be built quickly. Modular mm -hmm. housing can be built quickly. And so if we look at this, these are modular, modular housing. Mm -hmm. And so it would be put on the state land. Yeah. Yes. And the state land needs to be kept in state hands and affordable so forever. But these, there's... So the state, the state retains the title to the land. Yes, and makes sure it stays affordable. No developer so, gets their hands no, on right. it. Right, and so the infrastructure, water, streets, lights, electricity, mm -hmm. that's done by the state? I guess, or the city. But anyway, well, the thing is, this is, this is deceiving. Uh, because actually, it's just, you know how those um, steel um, framing for houses they have now are going up all over the place? Basically, what it also means is that you have, uh, it's, it's called oh, structural integrated panels or something like that. Anyway, so you have a piece of metal, not just the framing, piece of metal, foam insulation, about that big piece of metal on the inside. And you just, it's kind of like, kind of cute. So you just take this, you know, the four by eight, you have the steel framing, you go, -dook. next one, -dook. -dook. it's like, Tic-tac-toe, anyway, uh, not tic-tac-toe, but, um, you know, tinker toys. And it's pre-made in a factory. It's insulated, so that means it's insulated. For instance, they said that um, shipping containers were too hot, and you have to insulate it. Well, it's insulated against sun and wind, cold. Well, not, we don't get too cold here, but anyway, against the sun. So it's basically just like any other housing, but the construction, the construction and the materials are different, but it can go bang, bang, bang. It could just go up really quickly. And um, we need to do it really quickly because the Ohana zone money is only available three years. So now that you said the bill passed the legislature. Yes, this year. This year. And the governor signed it? Yes, he did on okay. July 10th. So when, when do we get started? <sighs> or how do we get started? Or who gets started? I have no idea how the state would do it. I have my own ideas, but I don't know if it'll happen. I don't know if they can. Um, I do know that um, they're looking at it already. But I don't know who would be the agency. Who is, who who is they? It. Who is the state? I don't know if the state would choose, say, HHFDC to develop it the way they've developed other places. The you know, in Kaka'ako. No, no, um, Hawaii Housing Finance. Oh, those people. For, for the whole state. Anyway, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe if it's on Hawaiian homelands. I don't know. if it, they, maybe, No, they, they lost $300 million. Uh, well, anyway, um, now, we're talking. No, no, we, no we that's, just, that's, we, we, we don't even want to talk don't about them. Talk about that. We just want to <laughs> talk about the state. Okay, so I don't know if they would give it to them to develop, um, but they need to move quickly. And they need to have a plan. You know, we have the land, 50 to 75 percent. This is Hawaii. It's really expensive. 50 to 75 percent of the land of the cost of housing is it's the land. land under it. Right. So when you take in on government-owned land, you take that cost off. You're making affordability possible. So if you have, we have the land. Mm -hmm. We have the money now. The the, the ledge gave us. And the, the governor gave us one billion two hundred you know thousand dollars, and we can start moving. They, I know they're looking at it, but for Ohana zones, they need to move past fast because the funds lapse in three years. So they need um, uh, affordable, portable, modular in order to to do it in that timeline. That's my thought, anyway. Well, that makes sense. Well, what about mobile homes? Uh, with that's all this state land that's available, to tell you the truth, I really prefer that we do um, development that goes up. Mobile homes, unfortunately, are only one story, so that there's not a good use of the land. And we have such a housing shortage, we need to build up. Tell you the truth, in town is where most of the jobs are. People nowadays, the younger generation, are looking at live, work, play in town. And in that case, if you find parcels of land in town 
um, you need well, to make low rise, okay. three story, or mid rise, four. But five, if six you story. go through Kalihi, mm -hmm. uh, near the waterfront, what used to be, and all of that, all of that is just sitting there. Mm -hmm. There's there, what used to be factories, what used mm -hmm. to be warehouses. If you drive through Kalihi, there's all of this that could be high rises. To tell you the truth, with climate change. And it, it, mid-century is just around the corner. I don't want to spend all, waste all of this resource that we have now, this hard, hard-won resources. People have been working on this for a lot of years. Well, I'm saying, but those Put are empty. Put it above they... Baratania Street. <laughs> Put it above the freeway. When the water comes up, whether it's groundwater inundation or you know high you know seas rising, Put it where you'll have beachfront property in front of you, <laughs> well, <when laughs> and it, you'll still be in their house. Where we live, where we live, when we oh moved gosh. in oh my God. in the eighties. <laughs> oh, 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 at high tide, <gasps> the ducks would fly up to the seawall. <laughs> now, at high tides, uh, the ducks walk across. Oh, for people that say, oh, "Oh, it's not happening. It's it happening." Is happening. It's happening. It's happening. Oh my God! It, but those are the kind of things you can mark. Those yeah. are benchmarks. Yeah. It's kind of hard to see when you look at the ocean and it's so big. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to see the rise. Mm -hmm. But those, like I said about the ducks, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. just walk across. Oh. Take the IPCC, the inter—I forget what that is on climate change. Inter International Panel or something kind. 99% of the people, the scientists in that UN Commission says global warming's happening. <laughs> it is. We need to take it into account. The city and the state are also on board. We need to take it into account and we need to have it embedded in our housing policy. Because I, I, you know, we, we're not going to be around for it, but we want the young kids to have some place that, you know, is dry well, <laughs> above land. This. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. I have to I have to remember that the next time I drive through Kalihi, I have to remember that all of Kalihi is going to be over. Oh my god! Oh my god! Anyway, <laughs> okay. Now I want you to look into this camera, and I want you to tell all of us why we should vote for you. Okay, you should vote for us because. We stand for out-of-the-box thinking. All of these um, details that I've been talking about, uh, my husband and I, my husband mostly, he's the analyzer, the researcher, have been researching housing and for, for decades. We need out-of-the-box thinking. We need fast action. And that's what the Green Party candidates for governor, lieutenant governor are about right now. We cannot wait. We cannot play politics. We need to just get the job done. And we need to get everybody on board under those terms. Get the job done. Because this is a critical time. We need to be moving, you know, um, because we cannot wait. And we, we cannot wait for people to say, well, why didn't you do something? We can, that's too late. We have to. We can see the problems. We have the solutions. We have the money. We have the land. We have the plan. We have the solutions. This thing on state land, it's been happening all over for many years. The state's been doing that for a long time. We need to expand it out and put it above the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Now, for people that haven't voted yet, when you go into the booth, you will see your ballot, and they will have all of the parties separate. So don't think you can vote on this one oh, and then yes. move over here. Oh, yeah. So if you select this party, you have to go all the way down. You can't go, or it yeah. voids your ballot. Yes. So read the ballot carefully. This is the Green Party. So read the ballot carefully. Be sure you stay within the lines. You don't want to have your vote discarded. So again, thank you. Thank you all for staying with us through this whole series.
that we have met so many wonderful candidates. Again, the election is the 11th, Saturday, August 11. I expect all of you to vote. Early voting is happening now. Please, thank you again. Vote, vote, vote. Yes. Aloha, and we'll see you next time.